Hi everybody, uh, I am Karen and I'm the CEO and co-founder at Fima. Today talking to you about how AI is disrupting commercial real estate. A few words about me as well. Um, lived and worked in the UK, South Africa and the Middle East, but born and bred in Estonia. And I studied uh, media and law and have been working with uh, commercial real estate companies now for a few years with Fima. Uh, which I'll talk about uh, a little bit more about later. However, when we talk about the AI and commercial real estate, the first mo thing to note is that this is the largest asset class in the world. It has always been slow to move and slow to innovate, but it's finally starting to embrace computer vision, uh, AI, machine learning, all the all the components and elements uh, that this field brings with it. Now, artificial intelligence here needs to be seen as an opportunity rather than a threat. Uh, it's a massive asset class ripe for innovation. It has lots of data. It could benefit a lot. So AI is gradually being seen as such. And when we talk about uh, commercial real estate and the built environment as such, um, this is the, the value chain within this. And I'm using Minna Learn graphic here. It's a brilliant Finnish um, online course, basically, about the AI in, in commercial real estate. And I thoroughly recommend uh, you read it. So it covers all of these areas. And I'll briefly mention and, and talk about all of them. So when we look at planning and, uh, planning and development, traffic pattern simulations is something where Machine learning has been used for a while. Um, so data goes in, data comes out about different types of uh, movement patterns uh, in our built environment. One of the things here is to note um, regarding expectation management. So if poor data goes in, poor data will also come out. And it will always need a hand-in-hand -hand relationship with human beings to basically be able to, to deal with this, uh, this field specifically. However, construction is another one out of the value chain where uh, AI is being used, mainly for health and safety uh, or initial kind of use cases have all been around health and safety. And this means monitoring if people wear helmets, if they wear working boots, if they have you know, gloves on, they're not going to restricted areas and so forth. Um, and um, data coming from cameras and sensors is also supporting project management. However, there is a vast difference between building sites when it comes to data quantity and quality. So some building sites are really well monitored. Some are not monitored at all. So it's a really patchy picture at the moment that we get, even across one company, when it relates to different types of uh, uh, building sites that they've got going on. Now, asset management or property management. Uh, smart building solutions have been in use for a while. Uh, so this is all around energy efficiency, tracking that. Uh, HVAC, waste monitoring, and so forth. Elevators have been using AI, facilities management as well. Um, and this is all about data about this particular object. So that's usually a building, a single building, and working with the data around that. Demolition and recycling is always a part of the commercial real estate value chain. Uh, and it also makes up 50% of all the waste in the world. It's a massive, massive part of our built environment. Um, and computer vision and as well as robotics have been used in this particular field for quite some time, usually for sorting waste. Um, but when you look at data usage as such, there are some missing regulatory frameworks that would uh, make companies' lives better. So, for example, around rug and cells who burn rubbish, or burn waste, uh, the waste turns into ash. And that ash has been used to create salt, table salt, to be used in food. You, you could use that in food. However, it's a product that's been made. It's a new product that's been made out of waste. Can this be now taken into usage or not? So there is some sort of um, discussion that still needs to happen around regulatory frameworks and how we can start using old, new uh, materials um, around us. Something that uh, FIMA worked on before we became FIMA was actually using AI and computer vision to map global pollution. Uh, so looking at basically uh, Google Street View images where trash is visible. 
uh, and then creating cleanup maps for a cleanup world. So computer vision uh, can be used really well in, in these use cases. Urban planning is another one where data is being used for better analytics, predictions and investment decisions. Uh, and again, there's a big, big dependence on the quality of data in order to be able to make any uh, decisions around this at all. Currently, it's coming from sensors. Believe it or not, manual counting. So Talon still counts bicycles manually as a community project. So people are encouraged to do uh, manual bicycle counting, basically, in, in Talon, rather than use sensors or computer vision solutions or cameras. Uh, obviously, mobile Wi-Fi data are part of that as well. And urban planning as such is extremely emotional, and it's very much about gut feeling rather than data. Uh, but obviously, more data should be used here. And urban planning is also being disrupted by really large trends um, around us, uh, like the gig economy, which means people want to work and live quite close to uh, where big hubs are so that they don't have to travel as much for work. Uh, also, we need to travel less for work. So there's a reduction on location-specific jobs and a serious increase in working from home that's not gone away since uh, since COVID. And self-driving cars will be changing the way our cities looks uh, the way our cities look as well as shared mobility coming into that play as well. So very much a field where machine learning and AI can start making a big, big difference uh, once uh, the reliance from gut feeling is, is moving away from here. Now, the components I just showed to you, the, the components of this value chain, they're linked by the fact that data in all of these value chain components, the usage of that data, it's still uh, very limited. So all of, all of these areas that I just discussed and then briefly showed generate lots of data, but the data usage is in its infancy and it's very ripe for innovation because AI is all about data, looking at patterns, working with it and then so forth. Now, ChatGPT, a uh, big recent uh, innovation that's come out, um, and I tasked it with um, with a brief. So basically, give me a brief for an interior designer. Uh, and I have a small shop uh, that sells soap and body products. So this is brilliant in terms of what it spits out. Uh, and you can use it for anything from specification writing to to more creative tasks as well. But also, the data can be fed into chat gpt the same data that comes from all of these value chains to make better sense of it and and create insights thus limiting the reliance on human analysts uh, basically there's another component here but i'll skip over this however when we look at dolly and i wanted it to basically create a shopping mall plan for me with two entrances two elevators two floors and six shops it does a really poor job of it so it doesn't really know what it what it um what it needs to be producing here. Uh, but when I want a, an illustration, it does a, pr a brilliant job, uh, as you can see from here. And then obviously renderings from generative AI uh, tools also look, look beautiful. Whether they're buildable or not, uh, I'm not an architect, but there are some great rendering tools uh, out there using generative AI. A few words about FIMA as well, because uh, I didn't mention what we do. So rather than look at sensors and install thousands of physical devices, we use cameras that are already there, uh, apply virtual sensors, and then the data come out, comes out. So we work with analytics in that field. And when we talk about case studies and where AI has been getting practical use cases, I'll start with um, a location very close to the current conference. Uh, this is Ulamista City and, and the parking uh, management within that field. So FIMA is being used for uh, mapping the usage of car parks and then visualizing the data on wayfinding systems, on online tools um, to help find better, find basically parking spaces in a, in a more easier way to understand what the usage is, but also to uh, cut down wayfinding and the, the CO2. So this is the dashboard and what it looks like. And what it gives us, what the benefits of that are, as uh, in addition to it being really simple and easy to set up and, and 
there's no need to use individual sensors per each um, parking space. It gives a real-time overview of what's going on in the car park. It has helped with uh, capital expenditure reductions. Uh, there's a better customer experience, but also because we've cut down the time it takes to find a free parking spot. Uh, it means uh, the additional benefit is a CO2 reduction uh, out of idling cars. Uh, data is used for planning. And the question also is, what is the cost of doing nothing? So it's all full and well, uh, not doing anything. But when we look at the benefits of it, it's quite clear that the cost of not doing nothing is much higher than starting to utilize AI, even as simple as a use case, uh, as parking may sound. Um, another one coming from um, a larger uh, planning project is the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park which is where the 2012 Olympics were held uh, in London. So when you think about the map of London, uh, this is central London, Queen Elizabeth is, the park is right where, basically in the middle of where my head is uh, right now. So it's quite a large area. And um, here, uh, actually, FIMA worked with uh, camera data. This is the locations that we were installed in, so kind of surrounding the park itself and looking at the model share, so what types of vehicles are in this particular location and, and where they go. So what, you may be asking. Well, this helps this particular location strategically plan better, namely how to reduce the share of vehicles in the street, how to design bike paths, where these bike paths should be, how to uh, increase public transportation usage and where specifically, um, and what else needs to be done, basically, to increase pedestrian traffic and decrease vehicle traffic. Additionally, uh, one of the strategic objectives of that particular location is model shift from cars to active modes of mobility. So again, AI got collected data uh, and analytics is something that helps do that. And services integration with those new active mobility modes is also something that uh, AI is helping them do. So, so lots of use cases, and specifically around a really, really large area of, of London. But when we look at just a single building, so moving away from a really large area to a single building, um, AI can also be used in, in just a single building. Now, in this particular space in case, it's about occupancy measuring in a tower building. So when before, sensors would only be giving partial data after using cameras. Uh, this company has a 360 view of all movement and occupancy within their towers. Um, and additionally, what they're doing is sending this data to tenant experience apps uh, so that th their tenants know what's going on in the building. And we also monitor things like elevator dwell times, for example. So how long people are waiting for an elevator uh, and feeding that data back to tenants so that they know when to go down, when waiting times are too long, and how to kind of pace and space people out uh, across an entire day. And it's very easy to scale this from a single building to, to an entire portfolio. Now, when we talk about AI as a supercharger or, or something that can really enhance and elevate uh, a specific field, so namely here at commercial real estate, uh, it can make things faster, cheaper, and smarter. Um, and what you're seeing here is a yogurt bottle. So we ran an experiment uh, within FIMA where we took uh, 10 pictures of this yogurt bottle. And then with generative AI created thousands of similar images of that. And then what happens was we were able to create them a model to detect these particular um, yogurt bottles. And it took less than a day to be able to go live with a brand new object and a brand new detection uh, within our platform. So what this has meant in terms of for a company, uh, in terms of uh, clients and, and why this sort of generative AI usage is, is a supercharger is the fact that now we're able to generate images using um, Dolly. So all of the stuff that you see currently on page are synthetically created images. So this means that data collection doesn't any longer take months. It literally takes a button click. So that means that commercial real estate, uh, um, hospitality, residential, etc., 
we can teach our AI anything in a day. So if a client needs to look at when cleaning schedules were followed, for example, by cleaning robots or a new type of vehicle entered their estate, it can be done in a really fast and efficient way. In fact, we no longer have a dedicated uh, AI team. We have a tech technical development team that's able to look after the AI components as well because the leaps in this field have been so vast uh, that we've been able to um, just use synthetic data to teach our AI new objects. In addition to Dolly, it's obviously ChatGPT uh, that we also mentioned earlier on that have kind of popped up. Uh, there are special applications for architects and builders that are disrupting this place. And there is a really, really, really big potential that's still currently not utilized in commercial real estate for optimizing, for expanding, for additional revenue increases, for new business models, for new teams to be emerging within these fields. However, what's missing the most is just the basic knowledge about machine learning, about AI, uh, and the kind of education within that, um, and the people you know, with, that, uh, with that background who would come and create interdisciplinary teams within these developers. And finally, imagination. So all the stuff that we can do with AI and machine learning and, and the data is also in its infancy because our imagination is, is not there yet within our businesses, uh, at least not with everybody. So, so that's something that I would call out uh, is, is still needed. Thank you for listening. And if you want to hear more, be in touch, ask questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me either via email or on, on LinkedIn. Have a wonderful conference and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you guys. Thanks. Bye-bye.